All right, so we started out today's session by talking about how compounds are atoms that are stuck together by some type of glue, some type of bond, right? And we said that there are two types of bonds you can have. You can either have an ionic bond that results from one atom taking electrons from another atom, or you can have a covalent bond which results from two atoms sharing electrons. Okay, so up until this point, especially in our demonstrations, I've been showing you examples of covalent bonds, where two atoms share electrons, overlap their orbitals to form a bond, a covalent bond. But now here's where we're going to distinguish between electron sharing, which forms a covalent bond, and electron taking, which forms an ionic bond. All right, so let's start off by talking about ionic bonds. Can any of you guys think of an example of an ionic bond or an ionic compound? Well, one of the first things that we all learn in chemistry is that table salt, NaCl, sodium chloride, that's an example of an ionic bond, an ionic compound. We might not know why it's an ionic compound, but hey, we know that that's what salt is, an ionic bond. Okay, so let's take a look at this thing. So salt, NaCl, Draw it like this, sodium with a positive charge and chlorine with a negative charge. And the reason why I want you guys to draw it like this is because these two atoms are not sharing electrons. Instead, chlorine is taking an electron from this sodium. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you draw out the Lewis structures for sodium and chlorine, what you'll find out is chlorine has seven valence electrons, so his Lewis structure is going to look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he needs one more electron to fulfill that orbital to fulfill his octet. Sodium only has one valence electron. Okay, so when these two atoms bump into each other, then chlorine is like, hey, I need one more electron. Hey, that sodium has one electron. I'm just going to take that electron for myself. And this is exactly what happens. You're going to find out that chlorine is a very strong atom at taking electrons from people, and sodium, in comparison to chlorine, is very weak. So what's going to happen is chlorine's like, hey, sodium, I want that electron. And he's just going to take that electron away from sodium. So chlorine is going to take this electron for himself, and sodium is going to be left without any electrons. Okay, so what does that do? When sodium loses this electron to chlorine, this electron is a negative charge, right? If you take a negative away from sodium and put it on chlorine, that's taking a negative away from sodium, and taking a negative away from sodium is the same as adding a positive to sodium. So that's how come you see that Na, or sodium, has a positive charge because you took an electron away from sodium. Taking away one negative charge is the same as saying you're adding a positive charge. So that's why sodium is sodium plus. And then chlorine is taking a negative charge, so he's adding a negative charge to himself, making him Cl minus. Okay, so whenever you draw out sodium chloride or an ionic bond, I want you guys to draw out these charges, sodium plus chlorine minus, because these electrons are not sharing electrons. As you can see, chlorine took the electron away from sodium. So I never want you guys to draw out an ionic bond like this with sodium bonded to chlorine, because this line right here, this represents a covalent bond, two atoms sharing electrons. And this is not what's going on here, you guys. As you can see, chlorine takes that electron for himself away from sodium, turning sodium into sodium plus and chlorine into chlorine minus, okay? All right, so one more thing to say about these ionic bonds, because why we call them ionic is because when chlorine took that electron away from sodium to become chlorine minus and sodium became sodium plus, these have now become ions. Remember, an ion is just an atom with a full positive charge or an atom with a full negative charge. And that word is key, you guys, full positive or full negative. Those are ions. That forms an ionic bond in comparison to partial charges, partial positives and partial negatives. That's what you're gonna see when we talk about a type of covalent bond, okay? So just keep this in the back of your mind for right now. When you see full charges, that's when you're talking about an ionic bond. Partial charges, that's when you're talking about a covalent bond. 
Okay, so what's holding these two atoms together is because they're opposite ions. Positives and negatives attract each other. Opposites attract. That's what's holding these together in an ionic bond, okay? Positive next to negative, negative next to positive, those attract each other. And whenever I take a look at an ionic bond, this kind of reminds me of a bad relationship between, you know, a really nice girl and a jerk of a guy, okay? So what happens here is that, well, first of all, I don't know how these get together in the first place. You know, such a nice girl with a jerk of a guy, but somehow they do. And the only reason I can think of is that opposites attract these two together. But what ends up happening in this relationship is that, you know, the nice girl, she gives, 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 she's so nice, and then the jerk of a guy, he's always take, 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 never gives anything back. Okay, so you see this relationship, you're like, I don't know how they ever got together, she's way too good for him, they've got to break up sooner or later. Okay, so that's exactly the case of what's going on here with sodium and chlorine. Chlorine's always taking, 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 sodium's always giving, giving, giving. Eventually, you know, these are going to break up because this is a weak bond. Okay, so sodium and chlorine, all these are held together by is the fact that opposites attract, just like a nice girl and a jerk of a guy. You know that sooner or later the nice girl's gonna get fed up and leave that chlorine, okay? So same thing going on here, you guys. This is a weaker bond in relation to a covalent bond. You're gonna find out later that covalent bonds are stronger than an ionic bond. An ionic bond, this is just like a relationship between a nice girl and a jerk of a guy that you know is gonna break up sooner or later, okay? All right, so moving on to covalent bonds now. This is where two atoms are bonded together by sharing their electrons. And hey, you guys, when you say sharing, this doesn't always mean equal sharing, right? Like if you and your roommate ordered a pizza to share, then if that pizza had 10 pieces to it, then you can share it equally so that you know your roommate gets five and you get five, but chances are you might share it unequally too. So if your roommate's really hungry, then maybe he'll eat eight pieces and you only get two pieces. Okay, so can we agree that there's two types of sharing, equal sharing and unequal sharing? It's the same thing with atoms and their electrons. Sometimes you're gonna have equal sharing of those electrons between two atoms. Sometimes you'll have unequal sharing. Let's go ahead and write some of this stuff down. All right, so a covalent bond, this is formed when two atoms come together and share their electrons. Just like we saw in our demo, when we had nitrogen and hydrogen come together, overlap their orbitals, the green box, and we saw the two electrons inside, that was nitrogen and hydrogen coming together, overlapping their orbitals, sharing those electrons to form a covalent bond. But hey, you guys, just because you're sharing electrons doesn't mean it's always equal sharing, right? You can either have equal sharing to form something called a nonpolar bond, or you can have unequal sharing between two atoms to form a polar bond. Let me show you an example of each of these. All right, so an example of two atoms that would be held together by a nonpolar bond would be something like carbon connected to a hydrogen by a nonpolar covalent bond. Okay, so this line right here between two atoms, this represents a covalent bond. That means electrons are being shared between these two atoms. Okay, so how many electrons is represented by this line, this bond? Two electrons, right? So if you wanted to, you could go ahead and draw out those two electrons right smack in the center between this carbon and this hydrogen because this carbon and this hydrogen are sharing those electrons equally in a nonpolar bond, okay? So these electrons aren't closer to the carbon, they're not closer to the hydrogen, they're pretty much right in the center. This carbon and this hydrogen are sharing those electrons equally in between themselves, okay? So if you wanted to, you can imagine that they're sharing you know, over an overlapping orbital with those electrons right in the center, okay? So this is known as a nonpolar covalent bond where two atoms are sharing the electrons equally between each other, okay? As opposed to something called a polar covalent bond. This is between two atoms such as carbon and oxygen, okay? So these two atoms are still being held together by a covalent bond. They're still sharing these two electrons between carbon and oxygen, but this is going to be an unequal sharing. What's happening here is that oxygen is gonna be pulling a little harder on those electrons than carbon, okay? So if you draw these electrons in between carbon and oxygen, 
oxygen is gonna be a little bit greedier than carbon and he's gonna say, hey, I want those electrons a little bit closer to me. Okay, so if you drew out this orbital, you'd see that, yeah, they are sharing these electrons in an overlapping orbital, but the electrons are closer to the oxygen than they are the carbon. So even though they are sharing in this covalent bond, it's gonna be unequal, okay? All right, so what's going on here, you guys? Because it seems like the only difference between a nonpolar covalent bond, a polar covalent bond, and an ionic bond is the amount of sharing of electrons going on between the two atoms. For example, for a nonpolar covalent bond, we have equal sharing between these two atoms. For a polar covalent bond, we have unequal sharing. And for an ionic bond, we have no sharing at all. We actually called it electron taking, right? So what's causing the different types of sharing between these atoms? Well, you can kind of think of it like this, because whenever atoms are bonded together, whether it's a covalent bond or an ionic bond, whenever two atoms are bonded together, it's like they're in a fierce tug-of-war battle. So they're on a fierce tug-of-war battle against each other. So carbon and hydrogen, they're both pulling on this rope, and this rope is these two electrons, okay? So carbon and hydrogen are both pulling on this rope. Carbon's trying to pull the electrons towards himself. Hydrogen's trying to pull the electrons towards himself. And so what it really boils down to is how strong these atoms are at pulling those electrons towards each other, okay? So if you have something like a nonpolar covalent bond where the electrons are right in the center between this carbon and this hydrogen, that's like a tug of war that's going nowhere. That's like two guys of equal strength trying to pull against each other. Carbon and hydrogen, they both have the same strength, so they're not gonna be able to pull the electrons closer to carbon or closer to hydrogen. It's gonna stay right in the center, as opposed to something like a polar covalent bond. This is where we saw oxygen and carbon pulling on these electrons. Carbon was trying to pull as hard as he could, but oxygen was more powerful at pulling the electrons towards himself. So oxygen was able to pull those electrons closer to himself because he was stronger. And with an ionic bond, Chlorine is just way too strong for sodium. So they're in a battle like this, and sodium's trying to give it his best shot to hold on to his electrons, but chlorine's so strong, he just yanks those electrons out of sodium's hands and takes it all for himself. Okay, so whenever you imagine these bonds, imagine these atoms being in a fierce tug of war, trying to pull these electrons closer to themselves. It boils down to how strong these atoms are at pulling those electrons towards each other and how strong they are is measured in something called electronegativity. Let's write this down. 